welcome to the Ain't No Bream Stalking video. I love watching uh, carp fishing YouTube videos as I know a lot of people do. Uh, and I thought I'd really love to uh, film my own one um, with a stalking style, which is the sort of fishing I enjoy doing, um, baiting, watching, uh, and hopefully catching carp. So um, last year I looked around uh, for a venue, you know, to film it. Uh, and the obvious choice was a copse lake. Um, I fished a copse lake back in 1999 uh, when there were six or original fish in there. Um, pretty one, crinkled tail, um, slate grey, the plate, scaly and the wily leather. And uh, I, had a, I had a really good summer in fact, you know, I managed to catch four of those uh, and the biggest fish and I absolutely loved it. The edge fishing was incredible. So uh, obviously this was a good choice for the video. Um, I did a, bit of did a bit of research last year and I did a bit of looking at the old areas I used to fish and some new ones. Um, the water level was really low last summer, um, big heat wave, so uh, the spots were really shallow, a lot shallower than normal. Uh, a lot of the spots were just two foot of water on top. So the fish did feed, they, they fed quite well, but they were always cagey, they never fed with the sort of gusto that I, or spirit that I wanted. Um, so I decided, right, I'm going to film this in the spring next year when the water's higher and we're going to have a, a quick go, sort of April April and May, and see if we can produce a video. Now I must add, the Cops Lake these days has got uh, a lot more fish than it used to have and it's also got an amazing fish uh, called Shoulders that I first saw a photo of last spring. Uh, I think it was a, a 41 or 42 pound, but it looked amazing. And I remember as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, you know, a 40 in the Cops Lake. That's incredible, you know, when I fished here, the biggest fish was sort of mid-30s. And I'd always imagined a 40 in the Cops Lake. So uh, that was an obvious target, and uh, I thought that would make a great video. Um, I've really enjoyed the sort of learning process of filming. Um, looking back on it, I could have filmed bits of it much better, but that's, that's all part of the rawness of it. That's, it's me learning how to do it. I'd like to have filmed uh, fish on the spots more, and that's something I'm going to uh, practice more with and do on the next video, because that's really what I want to get, what, what I'm actually viewing. But uh, the polarised filter I used wasn't particularly good. It just hasn't come out as I wanted, even though I have been videoing that. I have probably won't include it, it just isn't up to standard. It just doesn't do it justice. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoy it, and uh, here we go. The key to this uh, stalking style fishing is the preparation. So I've been baiting now for about three weeks. Uh, I've been baiting as often as I can, sort of every two or three evenings. Um, done the best part of a sack, and I've uh, got one sack left for the fishing. So uh, let's see if the uh, pre-baiting has done its job. Nice £22 pound common, caught stalking in the rain. Excellent. Let's just see the other side. Happy days. Stalking, caught in about. 10 minutes of putting the rod in. Excellent. It's getting back. Oh, oh. 
Travelling nice and light. Got a little bit more than usual because uh, I've obviously got to carry the uh, video equipment. So GoPro, tripod, various mounts. But um, yeah, nice and easy. The only thing I dislike about the stalking style fishing is uh, I just can't um, warrant bringing my brew kit. It's just another thing to carry. So. Uh, we're on to the flask tea. It's not good, but it gets you through. It'll do. Right, I had the last fish on uh, Sunday evening. I'm now back, it's now Wednesday evening. Um, let's hopefully we can get another one. Lovely 20 pound mirror. This one thought real powerhouse for, for fish. What a great one. The other side. A few scars on this side. Poor old thing. Ugh. Excellent. Let's get him back. Right, I'm back again. It's uh, May Bank Holiday Monday. Um, I've, already, I've caught two now. So the last sort of week and a half I've caught those two. So um, yeah, I'm back again. I baited heavily yesterday. Um, the clarity has just um, really gone, you know, to the point where before I could see every stone on the bottom, see the hook bait, really, really clear, almost too clear in a, in a fact, but the fish liked it, it was okay, but uh, it's really murked up. I can still see the bottom, I can see if a fish is on the spot, I can't see how much bait is there, um, can't see the hook bait. But I'd see if a fish was there, but it, yeah, it's, the clarity is really poor. But uh, on the plus side, the clarity on the lake behind me here, where I've got a little spot, has got better. It's just absolutely gin clear. And uh, the spot I was baiting has just gone, just gone to gravel. Um, and yesterday there was like, I don't know, maybe seven different fish on there. Um, I didn't put a rod in because I'm fishing here uh, on the cops, but. Um, my plan is to do a bit of watching on there tonight as well. Um, if I see something decent turn up, I've got the option of moving the rod. Um, but I'm confident on the cops late tonight, really confident. So I'm going to stay till just before dark. Uh, hopefully we get a bite before that. Right, just had a look on the spot. And there's a fish there feeding very, very well. pound very angry linear beautiful fish right last knock-ins fantastic Great evening stalking. Let's get him back. 
Right, it's the day of the uh, coronation, Saturday. Um, I came up here lunchtime, uh, put in 15 large handfuls. I wasn't sure I was going to be coming down tonight, so I may have overbaited, but I really normally put 10. But anyway, I put 15 in. I've come up here tonight and I've lowered uh, a small PVA bag onto the spot. Straight away, a big eruption of bubbles, not from the bag, but from a fish beyond the spot. I've obviously spooked something putting it in. The clarity is not good, so uh, it's hard to see. But um, I'm anticipating a quick bite. There's been a bubbling back. There's been the odd movement. There's definitely fish here. Um, I'm trying out the chest cam tonight because uh, filming on the head cam with a fight didn't work out so well. Here we go, I'm in. All right, let's see what we can do. Let's bully him in. There I go, mate. Gotcha. Little common. Just a little common. Five minute bite. <laughs> Tiny little thing. But uh, he whizzed off. Lovely. Actually got a take on film. That's something. Gives up the old chest camera test, see how that turned out. Let's get Rob back in and I uh, hope I haven't disturbed it too much. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a fizz come up just here and the spot is just over there. They often fizz here or in that channel before they join the spot. So it's a very, very good sign. There, it's coming up now. That's definitely carp, I and mean, that's what they do. I've been watching them, they come in here, fizz there, fizz there, join the spot. Um, often on the spot, there's no fizz at all. You know, it's hard gravel. But um, they like to show, you know, like to uh, give themselves away on the way in. I know that. All right, second one of the evening. Nice little fully. How's that? Go on the coronation evening. Two bites in about half an hour. Still time for another. Hey, that's fish number five now. Happy days. Right, we're back again. It's bank holiday Monday. Uh, I say I caught two on the Saturday night. And after that, I baited really heavily, 25 big handfuls. Didn't come down Sunday at all. Uh, came back today, Monday, lunchtime, put in another 15 handfuls, um, and I've come back now, it's six o'clock in the evening, I've just lowered a bag in, and just two handfuls over the top, so let's give it a couple of hours and see how we get on. Just had a look at the spot, um, and there's three there, um, one is very big, um, could well be the big one. There's definitely, all three are decent sized fish, but one of them is really big. Um, 
sort of don't want to spend too much time there and um, there's very little cover but I've just sort of melted back off the spot but they're there and they're feeding there's definitely a bite in this as always when I'm anticipating a, a bite I'm always thinking you know where they're gonna go um, now so far they've always gone where I thought they'd go which is from there out into this area here which is fine I know it looks a very tight spot there's not actually that many snags that can cause me a problem there's a snag over there but they're not going to run into a small bay they're always going to exit a small bay 99% of the time they're going to exit for the main water um, the one that caused me a bit of grief there's a little branch down here but it is very very feeble and it's been undercut um, the only place I don't want them to go is through that channel and the reason is there's a shallow hump in that channel and once they get over that shallow hump they're going to go nuts um, I find fish in shallow water if they get over shallow water they just go berserk and a friend of mine years ago uh, back in 1999 he was fishing here and he hooked one of the big mirrors from that shallow hump and uh, I've never seen a, a, a take like it. It just absolutely flat rotted him across the shallows. Uh, ended up smashing him, unbelievable. Um, but other than that, I, I'm anticipating them coming out here. Uh, and the next problem I've got is on that island, but really it should be good. There's a huge fizz just come up here. Absolutely huge fizz. There's loads of them in here, loads of them. There's a bite in the next sort of half hour, 100%. Uh, my only worry is that I may have overbaited at lunchtime because normally I'd have put 10 handfuls in and I put in 15. And the reason being uh, the coots have started diving. So I've had to allow for bait for coots. So. But the rig is on the spot. They like feeding on the most within the spot. So that always makes me feel a bit happier. It's a better fish, that's for sure. Could be the big one. Could well be the big one. This is a bigger fish. Slowly does it. big fish compared to what I've been having there he is Whoa.
slow and ploddy. Just trying to get into the bank. Clever thing is. I hope it's in. Yeah, I'm sure that's him. Sure that's him. He is big. Not down there, mate. Not down there, mate. Still got plenty of fight in him. Wow, this is worrying. It's big. Little size eight on the end there, so. Totally different fight to everything else I've had, which has been real scrappy. This is deep. He wants to go, this boy. No. Can't get him, let him go too far up there. Close here, he knows. Take me real close. Come on, mate.
starting to tire just ever so Hot in mouth stuff this. This is hot in mouth stuff. Oh, shit. It's tussling me this thing. Let's get him up now. Yeah, it's tussling me like a good one. Got him. That's him. That's him. That is him. Here it is. Shoulders. 41 pounds. What we came for. What a fish. What an absolute monster. Shoulders. Shoulders, 41 pound, what an absolute chunk, what a night stalking. Here we go. Here we go. There he is. Not scrapping this one. There he goes. There he goes. Spoke too soon though. Can't give them much in here. It's not much room to play with, but just enough. Just enough. Where are you going, mate? No. Oh, we ain't having that. Uh, 
can't go too far up there. Still going, isn't he? I'm not bullying him, so I don't really like bullying him. I like to just be in control of him. But some of my friends say, "Oh, you play fish really light," and I probably do. But um, I land them, and that's what. Well, hopefully I land them. I say that it could go wrong, but um, generally that's how I play. You know? I bully them when I need to. Try not to. Sometimes you can make them angry. Say this is a 30. Maybe a high 20, but it could well be a 30. Every time I say that, the uh, second wind, isn't he? scales look at that that's mega isn't it look at that beautiful cop snake carp stunning cop snake carp 30 pan exactly really made up with this one fought like a demon what a beauty The other side of this beautiful fish. <laughs> Another great evening. Any sort of two and a half weeks of this campaign. And uh, seven fish. Um, all stalked, all from the same spot. Please this punch. Right, he's going back. <sighs> Thank you, old girl. By filming this video alone, um, I've managed to keep all the captures quiet um, people have seen me fish in the spot but no one's seen me actually catch them and no one's seen me um, um, videoing the fish on the bank which has really helped me um, keep the spot alive and, and keeping other fishing um, I've come down this afternoon and it's the first time that I've actually seen a, a bank stick hole in the swim so I last came down Wednesday evening it's now Saturday so someone has fished it Thursday or Friday so I must add, with all those fish, uh, with the seven fish I've had, the one fish I could have done with a bit of help in was when I caught shoulders. It would have been nice to someone just to be a goalkeeper. And I did actually have a look around that evening just to see if anyone was in a close proximity. 
uh, and there wasn't. And with um, sort of the last half hour of light, I, I did it all on my own. Um, it's not something I'd recommend, but um, it all comes from experience. You know, I've had to do that on with big fish before, uh, where there's no one about, and I'm confident in doing that. But it's not something you know, I'd recommend doing. Um, but anyway, I've come out this afternoon just really to get some video footage, hopefully to get some fish uh, feeding on the spot. Whether I can do that, I don't know, but we can give it a go. It's, it's lighter than my normal evening sessions. So um, I've seen some fish, so uh, I'll do what I can. Right, <laughs> I did a walk around earlier of the lake, showed you the lake, baited lunchtime. I've come back, loads of fish on the spot. Uh, I think I've gone and caught a big common, 32 pound. Absolute beast of a fish. It absolutely fought me to death in this tiny boat. There it is, the big common, 32 pounds. They're all up in weight, time of year, and also the fact that they've been feeding them and feeding them in this bay. It's really made a difference, I think. The other side of this epic common. This could well be the last one. <laughs> I keep saying it, but you know, it's been an absolute stalking dream. Big common, 32 pounds, chuffed a bit. 
What an amazing campaign. Boy or girl. Thanks for the memory. That's number eight. While I was playing a big common tonight, I had my pay rides on. And uh, it never went far because it's in a tiny bay, so I kept it tight. So it took ages to get in, so we just ploughing. But while I was playing it, pay rides on, saw fish coming through, tight into my margin. Saw three different fish. Good fish, just looking what was going on, really. Really interesting, like just coming through. Weren't spooked by the thing, just ploughing around. You never know. But um, there's still another bite in it, but I think that's going to be the end. It's been magic. <laughs> The rig I used for stalking couldn't really be any simpler. It's just a braided hook link with uh, long hair. Um, the key is a bait. Um, I use a fish over trout pellet, but my boilie of choice is always a mainline activate. I've used it for like 20 years now. I've got loads of fish on it, whether it just be boilie fishing or um, fishing stalking. Um, I started with just putting a boilie on a needle and then like so and then just crumbling off the outer skin um, once I've got it into sort of an apple core shape I just use my nail and just just skim it down a bit Just skim it down. And you're left with like a barrel, which is like the perfect bait over pellet really. Just a, a small barrel hook bait. Like so. And we just mount that barrel on the hair. Right so, nice long hair. See there's a good bit of a separation between hook and bait. Just onto an inline setup. Um, about four foot of leg core. Nice sinking soft supple braid. Very sharp hook. And then put the rig in a PVO bag with the bait right at the bottom. You get the bait right down to the bottom, make sure the hair's not tangled, make sure the hair's perfectly sitting up straight. and then fill the bag with trout pellet keeping the bait at the bottom we just finish that off by putting the lead in the top of the bag give it a little pat down like that, a little tube just cut a bit of PVA Granny knot on a PVA. Now we have our bag. Now what I do now is I just trim all this excess PVA off. You don't need all this excess stuff. It's just 
be very careful trimming it, that you don't cut a leg or damage a leg or but um, you don't need any of that. There we go, I just always sort of lick the bottom there, fold that bottom bit in. There you have it, just a lowering position. When that lies flat on the bottom, your lead's here, your hook bait's right at the end. Perfect stalking setup. The clarity has returned, so I really want to show you this, and I hope that this new filter uh, lets us see it. This is the spot I've been hooking them from. Right, got here at first light this morning, um, put a rod in, sort of half hour after night, heard fish feeding ever since, and I've just landed this, what an epic fish in the morning light. Yeah, this is truly epic carp. 31 pound. What a fish. First one stalking session. There he is. What an absolute beauty. This Richie's Bay spot has been uh, really good to me. Um, in just over a month of fishing uh, short sessions, evenings and mornings, mostly sort of three hours, um, I've managed to have um, two singles, one double, two twenties, three thirties, uh, and the big one at 41 pound shoulders. So it's been an incredible run of fishing. Um, I normally have spots dotted all around the lake, but um, it's been so busy on here, it's been hard to keep anything going. Um, and keep it baited, uh, except for this one. So uh, anyway, the fish keep coming back, they've been trained to the spot, and uh, it's been a great run of angling. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I just wanted to show the simplicity of carp fishing. You know, when you can uh, bait up, you can watch and observe fish, and uh, build something, and then just with uh, one rod and a net, just go and catch them. Um, just like when you were a kid and used to go and catch fish uh, with like free line crust. Carp fishing can be very simple. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed and if you have, um, please like and subscribe to that Ain't No Bream channel. I've got some other projects in the pipeline, some interviews with other anglers um, and some other stalking videos on different lakes. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.